Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. The roadmap was updated, plus there has been many more Alpha 3.23 patches released, so today we're going to check them out. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members, in particular to my latest patron, Ovi. Thank you so much for the support, it is truly appreciated. So firstly, let us kick off with the latest roadmap changes. Now there are three new additions targeted to release in Alpha 3.23. They are already with the Eva Catty in that build, so it is so there's a good chance it will be coming. Uh, the first one being the Maroc, which is a type of fauna. Now this is a passive flying bird-like creature, and these Marocs live in flocks and are often found near lush green environments. So these look like a mix between a pelican and a pterodactyl. Next are the Copian. Now these are aggressive, agile, sort of wolf-like creatures that travel in packs and you can find these in a variety of areas from grassy fields to lurking in the darkness of caves. Now these are going to provide some very interesting gameplay when it comes to fauna in the verse. They are not necessarily dangerous on their own, I'm sure they can do a lot of damage, but they generally keep their distance when they are on their own and it sounds like losing sight of them will be a sign of danger, as it has been said that a single Copian would retreat to try and find the closest Copian and then potentially attack. So do not let your guard down. Now, in addition to these two new creatures, the third edition are new missions, Creature Hunting. And this says, missions that require players to locate, kill and retrieve valuable parts of creatures that roam the environment. Now, as we have heard, the Maroc bird produces a valuable stone that can be harvested, and the Copian's horn is also a resource to gather. So great to see the first creatures coming into the verse for the first time with actual missions around them as well. Cannot wait to see how this all plays out, as it sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, also, they have been continuously polishing the creatures' animations and so on, and will continue to do so. More on that in a second. Now, there are also two new features added to the roadmap. However, these are targeted to release in an Alpha 3.23.x patch, which means they are not coming with the initial release of this build, so some time after, but still within the 3.23 branch. Now, the first of the two is Vehicle Modularity, and this says implementing the ability to swap modular sections of certain vehicles to change their function. This initial release contains the torpedo and cargo room modules for the Retaliator, with additional modules and vehicles to be added in the future. So inevitably, the second new addition for 323.x is the Aegis Retaliator Gold Standard, which is updating the tally to the Gold Standard and including the introduction of modular rooms. So this is huge. What a great new addition for 323, albeit not the initial release, but still within this branch, still this year, I was really hoping that this would be the case ever since we read that the Retaliator is going back through its gold standard pass some, you know, quite recently. And for this release, it will just be the current Retaliator module being the Torpedo Bay and then the new cargo option as well, which is nicely timed for all the cargo updates. But as mentioned, more will come later down the line, like the Habitation and Dropship variants. But more importantly, this is paving the way for ship modularity to come along in the near future for every ship that requires it, which is extremely exciting to know. Anyway, that was the latest roadmap update, a great new addition there. Let us move on to the latest information on Alpha 323. So there has been about two or maybe three new patches since I last put a video out regarding Alpha 323. Things have really been ramping up with lots of polish done to the creatures and animations and how they spawn, as well as polishing for the Moby Glass and the map UI. They have also polished the water simulation, which now supports caustic shading down to a depth of one kilometer in the oceans. Before it was only up to 25 meters, so that is an insane increase and will certainly look a lot better. And hopefully when we start getting actual underwater gameplay like wreck diving and whatnot, we are going to visibly see them down below. That would be pretty cool. Uh, the Freelancer has had a component pass with polish and inclusions for its components, doors and animations. That is a very nice one. All the Lancers are basically getting a, I suppose, a mild gold standard pass here, bringing in their components, making them physical. It also looks like they are planning to introduce the freight elevator and cargo updates into the 323 Evacati branch soon for testing. Plus for Pirate Swarm, 
they have replaced the javelin that comes to support players with a Bengal class carrier. I really hope I get to see this. I don't know if I'll have time to play it, so hopefully someone out there has witnessed it. And to me, it's quite clear they are using Arena Commander as a testing ground and balancing ground for capital ships, most likely for Squadron 42, but of course for the Persistent Universe as well. Now, finally, it was mentioned on Wednesday that they are planning to run an Arena Commander Engineering Resource Network experiment game mode later this week. It's quite a mouthful. Uh, this is what we saw at CitizenCon, which is essentially engineering for your ships. Uh, plus, it does say that the build wave access is to be determined. So it sounds like they are gearing up to open up the 323PTU to more waves, likely just wave one. But that means it will no longer just be in the Eva Catis hands with the NDA and people can start streaming it and showing it off, including myself. Uh, talking of Eva Catti, though, I have just joined as an Eva Catti now. I've just signed the NDA papers and joined the group just in time for 323 to release to wave one, I bet. <laughs> I have tried to jump in, uh, but I don't think my access is quite yet available as the onboarding process takes a little time. So I haven't yet been able to play anything but this means that going forwards, I will be able to get my hands on the Evocati builds and talk about my experience, which I will do so on stream and here on my YouTube videos as well. I will also likely create a channel in my Discord for people to request what they want to know about with certain features. And if I get time to when I'm testing and playing, I will be able to specifically test those features and provide feedback for that request. Of course, I can't show any footage, play any audio, but I can talk about it. And if that does sound of interest to you, do let me know in the comments and I'll look to get that set up. So there is a lot going on around Alpha 323 with many regular tests going on and more and more features making their way in at a higher rate. As they said, what we know coming into 323 is only what they've told us. There is many more to come and we have seen many more roll out throughout the course of testing since that was mentioned. I've also heard some Eva Catti saying that Alpha 323 feels more like a proper polished game and not an alpha, which is wonderful to hear as this is exactly what I was hoping would happen with 323 with all these features and polishing going on to sort of bring it up to that new standard. So great things are coming along and here is to a timely release of 323 this month. It is targeted for the end of April, could be early May, could be a little later to be fair, it is a big patch. But with all the resources now that they have, fingers crossed they can meet those targeted dates. But before I go, I have teamed up with Game Glass, which allows Star Citizen players to basically turn their tablets and phones into their ship's dashboards using touchscreens to interact with all manner of your ship systems. You can design it how you want. You can dedicate whatever button you want to whatever. And right now, until the 8th of April, you can pick up a lifetime pass for Game Glass before it goes back to being a monthly and yearly subscription. Also, using my link will get you 5% off, which gives me a direct kickback supporting my channel and content. So a massive thank you if you are going to do that, and a massive thank you to all of you who have done so so far, because in response to you guys, Game Glass are providing some goodies to give away, which I will be setting up as soon as possible, including a 300i Star Citizen ship, multiple lifetime passes, and a 10-inch a tablet. So do keep your eyes peeled for that giveaway. Big thank you to Game Glass and to everyone who has supported the channel so far. But with that said, if you do appreciate my videos, please do consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. Also, come and hang out over at twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrother. You are all more than welcome over there. Hopefully 323 will go into wave one and I will be streaming that for the foreseeable. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you don't mind, it does the channel a big favour, and tick that notification bell if you'd like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Cannot do this without you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.